This video is sponsored by Razer and their new Dead Stalker V2 Pro keyboard. More on that later. Hey, welcome back. It's been some time since I designed a desk setup from the ground up, so that's what this video is all about. These types of videos are meant to inspire others to refresh their own setups, so here I went with a very compact desk, so it's accessible to more people if you don't have a lot of space. I set it up so it's clutter-free, featuring a super sleek blacked out theme and a bunch of interesting accessories. Hopefully you like this one, but if not, I'm also working on another desk setup, but with a light theme this time, so stay tuned for that upcoming video. Make sure you subscribe, but now let's have a look. If we start with the basics, I used an Ergon Office Shift 2.0 desk that I've had for a couple years already. This is a solid sit-stand desk with a super unique soft touch surface, it's heat and scratch resistant and it doesn't show fingerprints even though it comes with a matte finish. This is the black on black color combo which I think looks super sleek. And it's the smallest variant they have at 24 by 48 inches for a super compact form factor. The legs are some of the best with a three stage design which provides a wide range of heights and the controller allows for four height presets, perfect to share this desk with someone else. Even if you don't use the sit and stand functionality that much, just the fact that you can adjust the desk's height perfectly is a huge bonus for an ergonomic setup. As for my cable management, I decided to go solely with zip ties and velcro cable ties with a super long power strip. It's more work than using a tray as you need to manage all the cables manually, but it results in a super clean look with basically no cables seen from above. Those plastic cable ties are pretty cool as they come with double-sided tape and a hole to secure them with a screw, which I always do unless it's for a single lightweight cable. The power strip is attached to the frame and the underside of the desk with the sockets facing back so that the plugs and power adapters are hidden from sight. I also mounted this Thunderbolt dock under the desk for an even cleaner look. Given that quite a few cables connect to it, I preferred having it out of sight. For that, I have four plastic cable ties, and then I secured the dock using velcro tie loops that run through those plastic ties. The Shift 2.0 desk also comes optionally with grommet holes, and I make use of the left one for the Thunderbolt cable that goes to my laptop. As for my chair of choice, I decided to use the Steelcase Series 1 in all black. This is the variant with the lumbar support and adjustable armrests, and it's surprisingly comfortable while still being a very compact chair. The back breathes well and provides good support, and the seat has step adjustment for perfect ergonomics. For my monitor of choice, I went with a 27-inch 4K model. This one is from ViewSonic, I featured it a while ago on the channel, and the colors look great on its IPS panel. 4K at 27-inch is super sharp, that's a nice pixel density in my view. This monitor also works over USB-C, so it's a single cable to the Thunderbolt dock. It even has USB ports and a built-in KVM, although I don't make use of these features with the current config. It's a very solid unit and isn't too expensive for what it is. The stock stand doesn't look too great, however, so here I mounted it on an Amazon Basic single pole monitor arm. Although it's not tall enough in my view, what I like about this arm is that you can run cables inside the pole and have them come out at the back near the base for a super clean result. I also run the monitor limbs power cable through there. And speaking of which, the monitor lamp that I use here is Yeelight Space model. It doesn't have an LED strip at the back, nor is Wi-Fi capable, but the light quality is great and it still comes with a wireless puck controller for easy adjustments of the brightness and temperature. Now to the computer powering this setup, it's the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. This is the upgraded model with a 10-core CPU and 1TB of storage, which is great for my video editing needs. Now that it has an SD card slot, I don't require a dongle even on the go, so that's great. It's in clamshell mode to save on space with this smaller setup, and I'm using this Satechi vertical stand to hold it up. It's one of the few black vertical laptop stands out there that feel high quality, and it's nice overall being adjustable in width. And then, this laptop connects to a Razer Thunderbolt 4 dock that I mounted under the desk, like I said earlier, for an even cleaner look. So, with a single cable, I connect the laptop to the peripherals and the monitor all at once. This dock does look really nice, however, with underglow lighting and its black aluminum enclosure. It has a couple USB-A ports, Ethernet, an SD card slot, and additional Thunderbolt 4 ports for extensibility, where you can run two 4K monitors with the right adapters. Given that my monitor works over USB-C, I can use a direct USB-C to C cable with no adapter. All in all, a great addition to easily dock your laptop at your workstation. 
And now to the keyboard I went with and the sponsor of this video, the Razer Deathstalker V2 Pro. This is Razer's new line of low-profile mechanical keyboards that are great for productivity with a more neutral aesthetic, but still amazing performers for gaming with no compromises. I've been testing my unit for the last couple weeks and I've been more than impressed with it. This new family of keyboards is composed of three variants. The Deathstalker V2 Pro priced at $249.99 USD, which is the unit I have and it features a full-size layout and Razer's hyperspeed wireless technology with up to 40 hours of battery life with LEDs on. Then the tankyless version priced a bit lower at $219.99 comes with a tankyless layout as the name suggests, but keeps the media controls and comes with an improved 50 hour battery life. This is my favorite variant as I like the more compact layout and improved battery life. Finally, the non-pro variant comes with a full-size layout but wired only at $199.99 USD. And that's a great option if you want to save a bit at the expense of a visible cable. I have to say, this new line of keyboards looks really nice. The build quality is great with very little flex given the thick aluminum plate that wraps around all corners. The keyboard also comes with two sets of feet for triangle options. The top right corner houses the volume roller, which can be reprogrammed to your liking using Razer Synapse and media button. Both controls are metal and feel high quality. Now, Razer really upped their game with these new keycaps. They are laser etched ABS, but they come with this new ultra durable coating, which has proven to be very resistant to wear and oil for long lasting legends. Speaking of which, Razer went with a very clean font and they also made sure secondary legends were well lit by the RGB backlighting. Behind those new keycaps also hide Razer's new low profile optical switches. Here with my unit, I have the red linear variants, but a clicky option will also be offered. These switches are surprisingly great. They're super quick with a 1.2mm actuation point and 2.8mm of total travel. They also have silicone dampeners in them, making them pretty quiet, without the usual mushy feel of silent switches. All of that is great, but my favorite feature with the new Deadstalker V2 Pro is its wireless capabilities, which are incredible both for gaming and productivity. The Deadstalker V2 Pro comes with both Razer's hyperspeed wireless technology and Bluetooth 5.0. The latter is great for mobile devices or to switch between multiple computers with the three buttons at the back. However, the hyperspeed connection is what you'll want to favor for lag-free wireless, which is a must for gaming, but also very appreciated for productivity. I personally want wireless to feel like a wired keyboard, and that's what you get here. Finally, the hyperspeed dongle also allows you to connect up to two compatible devices to the same dongle with no impact on performance, effectively freeing a USB port. And speaking of which, that's how the mouse I got here is set up. A single dongle is needed for both the Deathstalker V2 Pro and this Orochi V2 wireless mouse. Although it is a gaming mouse first, I like its portable form factor and great performance. It lets you use both AA or AAA batteries and works with both hyperspeed or Bluetooth, so it's super nice for on the go. Given that this is a laptop powered setup, this mouse makes a lot of sense, I think. And finally, its matte black finish is a perfect match with this desk setup. The keyboard and mouse both sit on this super clean mouse pad. This design has been seen in a few places and it's called Seigaha. It's a classic Japanese pattern representing seas and oceans on maps and here, in grey and black, I think it looks super clean, adding a bit of texture. Given the limited amount of space I have, I decided to go with a Sonos One for my speaker of choice. It is a wireless speaker, so it's not hardwired in any way to my MacBook, but it's AirPlay 2 compatible, so I can easily use it similarly to an audio device that's actually connected to my laptop. With AirPlay 2, lag isn't too bad, but does exist, so it's pretty good for music, but if I want a more direct experience, I switch to headphones. Sitting on this all-aluminum matte black headphone stand from Uppercase Design is the Razer Barracuda Pro wireless headset. This one works with both Bluetooth and hyperspeed like the Deathstalker V2 Pro and it features active noise cancelling, which performs quite well from my own test. I solely use it as headphones as I have a dedicated microphone, but it's a very solid middle ground between gaming and productivity with its more subtle design. I have to be honest, it doesn't sound as great as my Sony XM4s, it's a bit bass heavier and the highs are not as detailed, but it's also not in the same price bracket and it has this lag free aspect with hyperspeed that the Sonys lack. I wouldn't game with the Sonys. 
For my other audio and video gear, I set up this Vigim LS11 desk arm, which has a side arm, perfect for a microphone, and two ball heads with an extension arm to have my webcam in front of me. This is a pretty cool product, and I'll review some of the more extensive options Vigim offer in upcoming videos. The mic I went with is the Razer Siren Mini, which offers a pretty good sound quality given its low price. It is a condenser microphone, so having it closer to me will yield an overall better sound quality. As for the webcam, Razer provided the Kio X, which is also a budget-friendly webcam that offers 1080p at 30fps or 720p at 60fps for a more fluid video experience. All in all, this makes for a more than capable setup for video conference calls and meetings. Alright, so this is a test of the Razer Siren Mini microphone and the Razer Kio X webcam. Although they're part of Razer's budget offering, I think the quality is actually pretty good. I mean, the sound quality of the microphone is decent, and the image quality of the webcam is also pretty good. And last but not least, I got some accessories on the desk that I thought were a good fit aesthetically. So we have a small succulent plant in a matte black pot. I found both of these items at Ikea, and they were quite inexpensive. Same thing with the little matte black vase, but here I made my own fragrance using essential oils and those thin bamboo sticks to help diffuse the scent. Again, I think it matches perfectly. And finally, I had this coaster I received as a gift at work and thought it was quite fitting here with the wood and black theme. It's from AreaWare and I'll have a link to it down below. Alright, that's it for today's video. Let me know what you think about this desk setup down below. If you have ideas on how to improve it, I'm all ears. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.